All right, so we're here at the gym. This is my high school, the old stomping grounds. So like right there, like my mind is caught up and it's just like I did that 10 times because uh, on the fifth time that I did it, it didn't feel just right. So what, was the, what thought was that attached to? So a thought attached to that was that, you know, my parents are going to die in a car accident. And it puts like that intense fear into my mind that I can't. To me, it's like, all right, I'll do that compulsion to save their lives. Like it's it's minuscule compared to, to losing them. So why don't I just do it? And that's kind of how OCD traps you. My name is Tom Smalley. Hear my story. Growing up, my childhood was, I, I had a good time. Like, me and my brother grew up together and uh, we're best friends. And I think we had a, a, a good childhood, but I could, I could always tell that I was a little bit different than everybody else. And um, suffered from anxiety and depression like early on in my childhood. Um, I think my parents both realized that there was something a little bit different than me, uh, in me compared to other kids. I think the first time I noticed something different was when I was in like fifth grade. Um, I remember at our lunch table we were cleaning up and I wanted them, like my friends, to clean up in a certain way and I cleaned up in a certain way. I was taking longer at things than other people and I could tell that there was something, something off about the way I, my thought processes were and, like, compared to other people. You know, in seventh grade, I, I was diagnosed with anxiety, and we didn't know it was it was OCD yet. And as time went on, you know, I was playing basketball uh, for my high school and freshman year. And I, I vividly remember during practice having to go to the locker room because before, when I was getting changed, I didn't close my locker door, and so I would literally excuse myself during practice in the middle of drills just to go into the locker room and close my do my door. Uh, my locker door again to, to make sure that it felt just right because otherwise I was at practice instead of being present I was at practice thinking about uh, you know having that intense fear of maybe my family will get killed in a car accident while I'm at practice so I should just go close my, my locker door again and I could tell that that was kind of the okay this is something seriously up you know that that turned into me having 12 to 14 hours of compulsions a day because I was just trying to get that just right feeling all the time Usually there's like a mental ritual that goes, a compulsion that goes with it. So if I close a door, I usually say like, my family will not die in a car accident. And if that doesn't feel right, it's like a feeling within your body and like your mind, then I'll do it again and again and again until I get that feeling of, okay, that felt right. And that, that's like a, a trick OCD just plays on you. And my daily life was I'd wake up and it would take me an hour or two just to get downstairs for breakfast but, you know, I had to have my parents help me like get dressed and help me literally down the stairs because I would go on the perimeter and I'd walk back up the stairs down the stairs up the stairs down the stairs until it felt just right all these things and and it amounts to people thinking I'm lazy but it's really just you know these these inner demons of just OCD just that that grasp uh, that take your whole life away and make you lose control so with my OCD, I have to do everything in increments of five. If I don't hit that just right on each five, then I just do it another five times and another five times. So when I do things like my seatbelt, clicking my seatbelt, it's five times. And when I do things, um, you know, picking anything up five times, putting it back down five times, uh, brushing my teeth, I like to do it five times. You know, so all these things add up and, you know, it, a lot of times it's not, it doesn't end on five. It's increments of five, but it can go to a hundred, it can go past a hundred if it doesn't feel just right on that five. So it, it ends up accumulating so much time away from my day. When my parents would try to, would try to stop my compulsion midway, I think that's when I was more, most irritable too. Um, to me, I was saving them um, by doing that compulsion because I didn't want them to get hurt. And those were my obsessions. So, you know, for them to stop me midway was extremely frustrating because if I was about to have that just right moment at, at you know, 25, the number 25, and then they stop me, I would lose count, and all of a sudden I have to do that compulsion over again, and I get really frustrated with them. And I think that really put a, a strain on a relationship during my OCD struggles because they were so good about being supportive, but 
you know, at, at some point it's kind of like they don't know what to do anymore. And uh, I think we definitely reached that point plenty of times. Rock bottom for me was feeling like I just had a life that wasn't worth living anymore. Getting up every, waking up every day and knowing the excruciating anxiety that I was going to go through, there was nothing in my future that I, that I saw that was worth powering through that. And that's a scary thing. You know, I've, I've lost friends to suicide. I've lost people I know um, because of the mental health community I'm in. And, you know, it's, it's so real to me. And I've had those thoughts and, you know, have, have thought about acting on them. And the, the fact that I got into treatment quick enough before those thoughts actually came to fruition. I'm really, I'm really blessed for that. We started ER, ERP and what ERP is, exposure response therapy is, it puts you at face to face with that obsession, that intense fear, that, that intrusive thought that's popping in your mind every moment and it makes you sit with it. So if I was gonna do something five times, I would do it three, I would do it once and say, as I did it, I would say, my family's gonna die in a car accident. And I had to just sit there with, with that anxiety. And for some people, people might be like, oh, that's pretty easy, but that's because they don't have OCD. They don't have what that, that fight or flight response always triggered. So I couldn't decipher whether it was real or not real. Like I knew it was an irrational thought, but I, it felt so intensely real because of my OCD. So ERP heightens the anxiety all the way, and then it brings it all the way back down. And it could take hours and hours and hours of, of sitting with that discomfort, but over time it gradually decreases. And it, it's, kind of teaching your body how to live with that. So every day when I resist these compulsions, I'm, I'm taking what I learned in ERP and living with discomfort while I go about my daily life. I mean, when I was in high school, we didn't think I was gonna graduate high school. Um, they said that college wasn't a good option for me, that I wouldn't make it through four years of undergrad, um, that I should go learn a trade and, and, and start working and then live with my parents. Um, some even said that I should go into an inpatient facility just because um, I, need to, I needed to really improve and wasn't ready for that next step of, of socializing with other people. And um, you know, now I have my master's degree in exercise science and I'm going to, be, to work and, and do what I love every day. And so you know, for people that are at rock bottom, you know, it's a cliche of like, there's always hope, and, but there really is. Like you, can, like, you can't ever let anybody else put limits on you. With God's grace, there's, there's no limits. To what, what, to what you can accomplish. If you're struggling with OCD, I know, I know how lonely you feel, I know how, how ashamed you feel and embarrassed, but you have to understand that this can be only temporary, t temporary if, you, if, you, if you make it temporary. You, know, you, you, can, you have the chance to go to treatment and treatment does work. You know, it's effective and there, it, there is time that you'll get back and you'll, you'll gain your identity that you can really become someone that you've always wanted to be.